Hi, welcome back to the National Post Speakeasy. I'm here with John Iveson at the Metropolitan in Ottawa. And today we're talking about an issue that has caused some controversy for uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Fox News calling him a reprehensible man. Uh, what's going on, John? Well, it's all over uh, the summer jobs program. It's, a, it's really about the abortion debate. Um, people who are applying for the summer jobs program have to tick a box which says they attest to uh, certain rights, including reproductive rights of women, which essentially says that they agree with abortion. Now, obviously, that is a problem for anti-abortion groups, but it's also a problem for a lot of church and faith groups who feel that this is uh, wrong, that they should be obliged to essentially agree with the Liberals' point of view on abortion just to get government money. Mm -hmm. And I happen to agree with them. I mean, I think uh, Trudeau claims that this is a, a reproductive rights are charter rights. Uh, that's arguable. Many people on the, on the, uh, the pro-life side don't think it's a, a charter right. But it's certainly a, a, a charter right that freedom of expression and, and being able to express your own opinion. And I think that this government, which proclaims itself the, the, the party of the charter, is infringing the charter by insisting that people have to agree with it to access government money. Mm -hmm. And the government says that they want groups, church groups, who do things like services for refugees and other types of programs should be allowed to get the funding, but they still have to check this box. But they, they, it's a pretty easy fix. I mean, you just redesign the website and you take the checkbox off. And then uh, presumably, if you don't want to give anti-abortion groups the money, then you don't give them the money. But I think that they, the, the government quite likes bringing up these culture wars because it works for them politically. Um, except I think they've overreached here. I think when, mm -hmm. they, when you start, uh, I mean, there was a round table, our colleague Brian Platt was at last week in, in Mississauga, and sitting around the table were Muslim groups, Jewish groups, Sikh groups, uh, Catholic groups, all of whom the, the, the Liberals would hope to get the support from politically, uh, and they're all protesting this government policy. So I think that they've gone too far. When I interviewed Trudeau last week, he said, well, we'll work with the mechanism. We want to work with these groups to make sure that they're not af affected. Yet they haven't done anything yet. And mm. it's, it seems to me uh, very odd that they haven't just made a simple change and essentially told these groups they're, they're exempt from this. Mm. There was a great bit of irony in uh, Brian's latest story as well about this. The uh, abortion rights group that originally pointed out that perhaps pro-life uh, or anti-abortion activities shouldn't be funded by this program, they're now saying that the Liberals went too far and maybe you should reconsider the strategy. So it'd be interesting to see how that Well, I think it's, it's not played out yet. And the fact that it's getting publicity in the U.S. Mm. Uh, and is now you know, affecting, potentially affecting Liberal support among Sikh and Muslim groups who have been very supportive of the Liberals thus far, uh, that means it's, uh, it's going to run and run this story. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the U.S., uh, any predictions as the next round of NAFTA negotiations starts in Montreal this week? Well, you know, I don't think we're going to see a breakthrough so, such that a deal is made, but uh, it sounded like the, the Canadian side is going to be flexible. Christian Freeland had talked about uh, some creative thinking that we were doing. And these previous areas that were non-starters, the, the sunset clause, the dispute resolution settlement, uh, rules of origin on autos, we weren't going to have anything to do with any of those U.S. demands. Now, apparently, we are willing to bend on some of them. So it may be uh, that enough that we at least continue talking and that Trump doesn't pull out of the agreement. I mean, what do you think? You're, you're watching it closely. Well, that's, that's the specter is that looms over, is that Trump might eventually just take a unilateral decision, maybe see something on the news that day and, and decides in, in a snap. So we'll see how it all plays out. Even if he does pull out, though, that, that only triggers a six-month period right. at the end of which they can decide whether or not to actually do it. And so. he's been talking about, well, let's let it wait until after the Mexican elections, which you know suggests that he's not going to do that but yet stories coming out of uh, Bloomberg uh, at the end of last week were suggesting that maybe they will, that now that the U.S. is running out of patience with Canada. Mm. So it's, it's exceedingly hard to predict how this mercurial man who is, you know, not interested in trade really, uh, how he's going to react in this. Mm. Well, we'll be watching uh, very closely. Thanks for joining us on the Speakeasy. We'll see you next time.